Earth sciences today is uh, far more complicated, far more broad than ever before. The problems that we're interested in are highly complex. Until now, we haven't had a way to compare um, what we've seen on Earth to anything else. But now we have a great deal of data from other planets, and so we're able to look back and see Earth in a different light. The Department of Earth, Environmental and Planetary Sciences here at Rice University, we, I think we're in our uh, golden era right now. Um, we are one of the leaders in uh, what I call whole Earth uh, systems. And what that means is that we have faculty that are, have their own expertise and we're very diverse, but we all have the ability to cross disciplines and be bigger than we are individually. One of our projects that involves a lot of people in our department is uh, long-term carbon cycling. Uh, and that brings a lot of people together from geophysicists to geochemists. One of the main focuses of my research is the chemical composition of river waters, as uh, rivers give us um, a tool uh, to look at how uh, CO2 sequestration takes place at Earth's surface. And if we understand the basic controls as it varies across Earth's surface today, uh, we can use those relationships to understand both how CO2 sequestration may have varied in Earth's past, but also uh, as we deal with our own anthropogenic CO2 emissions, how to uh, best design uh, systems that mimic Earth's natural processes to remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. My research is focused on understanding both the composition and the dynamics of the ancient atmosphere. And how I do that is I use stable isotopes. These are tracers uh, that are locked within different types of molecules. I use those tracers to trace how those molecules were made, where those molecules went over time, and I try to look for these records within uh, different types of archives, including ice core archives, as well as uh, archives locked in different types of rocks. What I think is really cool about our research is that we're at the cutting edge of analytical techniques. We're measuring isotope ratios that have never been measured before. We're measuring subtle variations in things that no one has ever seen before. We couldn't even do this five or 10 years ago. And what we're discovering are new ways of looking at the same sets of problems, not just on Earth, but also on other planets. I study past surface environments on Mars and especially the formation of sedimentary rocks and the fluids that have passed over the surface. And we're really interested in that whole source to sink system. Through that we can understand this kind of complex history of surface environments on Mars, which then causes us to look back at Earth. And we understand Mars and Earth better by seeing how sedimentary systems work on both planets. Another one of our projects is uh, continental dynamics. And that too brings together seismologists, those who use earthquakes to study the deep structure of the earth, all the way to geochemists and petrologists and uh, uh, environmental uh, scientists. I studied the deformation of rocks, uh, so how rocks respond under stress. And um, I do that primarily experimentally. So I have a lab where I subject rocks to high pressures and temperatures, and then I try to um, simulate the processes that happen on the earth. Recently, I've been working in, in central Texas, about five hours from Rice University, where we suddenly uh, gain access to a private ranch, a very large one, which has this unique world-class outcrops of reefs growing you know, uh, in an ocean 500 million years ago, upper Cambrian, made by microbes and bacteria. And you can see the outcrops in this private ranch are unique and almost you know, kind of unseen and unobserved anywhere else in the world. I'm an experimental petrologist. Uh, the main goal of our research is simulating um, high pressure temperature conditions that are relevant for interior of our planet and other terrestrial planetary bodies. And the type of questions we ask are what happens to the rocks or other materials that are present in the deep interior, how they undergo partial melting, how they generate magmas, how different volatile elements dissolve in them, and how such processes end up eventually affecting what we observe at the surface of the planet. Some of the other projects that we're very interested in are coastal sustainability, basically looking at the geologic record to reconstruct uh, past history of sea level rise, uh, hurricanes and so forth, so that we can make better predictions in the future. 
One of the reasons that I chose to come to this department for my graduate uh, program was not only is my uh, faculty advisor world renowned, but I also get to interact with a really good lab group um, who uh, include students from all over the world. So we come from different backgrounds, we have different experiences, different academic and cultural experiences, and I think that helps build me as a person overall. I learn a lot from them just as much as I learn from my advisor and the professors here. Houston is a really dynamic city. We have a lot of the energy industry is located here. We have the NASA Johnson Space Center, you know, Space City, and the relationship with those industries provides a great basis for collaboration and for innovation and kind of thinking in new directions. With the Institute, our goal is to bring all of these different disciplines together to tackle both uh, the future of energy in the United States and environment. So we are interested in, in exploration, we're interested in extraction of uh, resources, but we're interested in doing it in an environmentally responsible uh, way and efficient way. And this new approach of thinking about the Earth as a whole Earth system into tackling these complex societal problems.